Hello and welcome to second uh, Java training tutorial. In the first session, we had written a very basic program for Hello World, and we had uh, printed that we all want to learn Selenium. So in this session, we will see how we can uh, write classes, and we are going to have introduction of object-oriented programming in Java, and then we will also see how some of these concepts are used in Selenium. So let's begin with. Uh, so to give an overview of OOPS, OOPS is one of the uh, very, very, very famous uh, object-oriented uh, programming uh, terminology, and Java also follows OOPS. Now in OOPS, we have a couple of concepts. Uh, for example, we have objects, we have classes, we have packages, we have interfaces, we have inheritance. So let's have a look at them one by one. So let's see what, what is an object. An object can be uh, considered uh, something which is comparable to real life uh, entities. For example, when we look around, we see lots of different objects, be it an animal, be it uh, a non-living uh, entity, for example, a dog, uh, is an animal, a bicycle is a non-living entity, but all of these can be considered as objects. And all of these have all of these have certain properties which are known as a state and behavior. For example, a dog has color, a dog may have a name, and these are called the state or uh, uh, or property of the object. And then when it comes to behavior, then a dog can bark or dog can run or we can use bicycle uh, to bike around and these are the behaviors for the object. We can use the same terminology or the same concept when it comes to programming languages also. For example, whenever we have to construct uh, an object, we have to see what this object can do or what kind of properties this object can have. While writing a program, we can see uh, that how these properties and behaviors are created. Now, one, one of the very important concept of object-oriented programming is the data hiding. That is, when it comes to defining the state of the object or the properties of the objects, these cannot be accessed by everybody uh, in theory, which means that we have to hide this information as much as possible and we should only provide the public methods so that other objects can interact with it. We will see it in, a, in an example uh, after a while. So this is all about the object. But how, how do we get access to the objects? How do, we, uh, how do we use the behaviors which is defined for the objects? To do that, we have to create something called a class. So what is a class? Class is a blueprint for an object. Class is something which constructs objects and then we can use these objects in our program. So what's better way to define a class than writing a program? So let's 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 see one small uh, class here. So I have a I have created a class called bike, which is part of a package called oops. We will see package in a while. And then this uh, class has certain properties as well as method. In case you do not remember, it's very easy to create a package. I, you just have to right click on a package, which is the source package here, and then select the package. This is how, crea this is how I created the OOPS package. And once I have the OOPS package, then I can create classes inside this. So just right click on it and say new and class and give it a class name, and then you are done. So I have already created a bike class. Now let's look at the bike class. So bike class has public access accessifier which means anybody or any other class can access it and now it has a property which is known as wheel count and then it has a method which is the driver uh, well this name does not seem right because method name should be a verb so let me change it to let me rename it yeah let me rename it to drive not the driver yeah yeah so a method name should be a verb or the behavior should be verb. So now it looks better. Now coming back to the property of this class, it is declared as private. It means that only this class or can directly access it or object of this class can uh, directly access it. No, no other object can access the property called wheel count. Uh, this is called data hiding. This is one very important aspect of 
oops which I was talking about that is we have to hide data as much as possible this also provides a sort of security consider consider an example wherein we are dealing with SSM numbers or bank account numbers so we cannot have these uh, informations being public we have to have this information available as private and then we have certain behavior from the class which should be used to modify these properties in certain manner okay let's get back to our class example now so we have a property called wheel count and then we have a public method its syntax is public which is access specifier we will see more of it in upcoming tutorial this method does not return any values so void and the name of the method is try the method is very simple we are just printing a statement called run the bike okay so this is our basic class with one property and one method that's all now let's see what more we can do in oops so we saw object we saw class let's have an uh, let's have a look at uh, something called inheritance now so while programming we will come across many situations wherein we see common behaviors in different classes and when it happens so then we do not want to write the same code again and again and again we want to reuse it and how do we reuse it so we do uh, we reuse the behavior by using another aspect of oops which is known as inheritance so inheritance provides us the capability of inheriting methods or the behavior from different classes let's see it with an example so we have a bike class but we know that we have different kinds of bikes in the world so for example we have geared bike and we have non-geared bike so i have created another class here which is called geared bike and its syntax is slightly different from the previous class so what we have here is we have public class gear bike and it extends the bike here extends is the keyword which is used to inherit behavior from another class so let's go back to the bike class so this is the bike class and now if you see IDA has one symbol here which says that it is subclassed by gear bike subclass because gear bike is a class which is inheriting properties from the bike class so let's go back to the subclass the gear bike now this gear bike has its own state which is gear count so gear count is the count of number of gears uh, which is applicable only for gear bike it cannot be part of bike because we may or may not have gears in a bike and what else does this gear bike class have in fact nothing else it has just one main method so let us see what is happening in the main method in the main method we are creating an instance of gear bike class how do we do that we do this by writing the name of the class then name of the instance we can write any name here whatever we want then equal to then new which is a keyword and then name of the class so this is the way to create the instance of a class so we have name of the class name of the instance any name whatever we want to give equal to new and then name of the class after this we have the instance or the object of the class and this is what I was referring to when I spoke of object of a class now we have object of the class and now we can carry out different operations on this object of the class but now if we see what I have done here is I am calling the drive method but where is the drive method coming from because in the gear by class we do not have the drive method and this is where inheritance comes into the picture because our bike class has defined the drive method hence or let's let's go back to the bike class and let's see it again yeah this is a bike class and here I have the drive method now since my geared bike class extends the bike class I have access to the prop uh, to the behavior of the bike class hence I can call the drive method here so my gear bike already has the drive method isn't that uh, a very 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 important aspect that I do not have to write the drive class uh, drive method again and again and again I can just reuse it by extending the bike class so let's run this program yeah so it prints a statement here which is run the bike and this statement comes from the implementation of the drive method which just prints the run the bike statement that's all now this is about the class uh, sorry this is about the inheritance but there would be instances when we see that we have 
examples wherein the class does not have any implementation and we will see this in a while how it is in selenium but in that situation what do we have is a special class which does not have implementation for any of its methods for example bike class does not have to be necessarily a class it could be an interface so let's 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 define an interface now so let's create an interface here yeah so this is an interface now now modifier private is not allowed here so let's make it non private or let's remove it for time being we don't have any such property okay and now we have a method which is implemented but interface cannot have any method implementation so now we have to remove the body of it and then we have to just add a semicolon here so this becomes an interface now so interface has the keyword interface it does not have any of the implementation of the method so it has just an empty method body now let's get back to the gear bike class and let's see what's happening there because bike is no more a class now it's an interface so let's see here we have some errors here gear bike class can no more extend bike class so it has to implement it so let's add keyword implement here okay now we have added a keyword implement but we still see some errors these errors are there because we have not implemented the method of the bike class if we see the bike class the drive method is no more implemented so we have to implement it in a class which is implementing the bike interface which is that class the gear bike class so we have to implement it now so let's click on this red bubble and select implement method which method to implement drive let's say okay and here is the implementation well it is empty right now so we have to write it ourselves okay so i am just writing a plain print statement here and i will say in gear bike now if you see there is an annotation here which is override this indicates that the drive method is overridden in the gear bike class we will see more about annotation in the future so let's not worry about this now this has been added from the ida if you want you can remove it also it would be all right and then there is a special symbol here i which says the method has been implemented here or implements method in oops.bike okay now coming back to our main method the main method remains the same we are instantiating the gear bike the difference here is when i say drive here the drive which is being called is the drive from the gear bike class because the implementation of drive method is in gear bike class now so let's run it so it prints the statement which is in gear bike which is pretty obvious from here that a statement is being printed from the implementation of drive class uh, sorry drive method okay so this is how we can have an interface which can be implemented by different classes and then all of these classes can have their own uh, their own specific uh, implementation of methods from the interface okay now let's see what is a package well we have been using package from quite a while now but to introduce them formally a package is a collection a logical grouping of different classes or interfaces so here we have a source directory or a source package in this we have another package called oops and then we have bike interface and the class interface here and if we have a look at the top section of our class then it has the declaration of the package which is the oops package here all right so this is about the package so we saw object we saw class we saw interface and we saw package now let's see how it is in selenium okay so let's see selenium api now okay so this is the selenium api in which well this page is available on my side so you can access it from there so we see that there are if we click on overview then we see there are lots of packages in selenium we have com dot thoughtworks on selenium and quite a few other packages uh let's click on one of the package so i'm going to click on org open qa dot selenium so it loads the page 
yeah so this package has couple of interfaces so this is the interface these are the interfaces and then it has couple of classes if you have a look at the interface then you see that web driver itself is an interface all right so web driver is also uh, the name of the api and web driver itself is an interface and this question i see this question coming very often during interviews that is web driver is an interface or a class so it's very clear from here that web driver is an interface it's not a class and this interface is implemented by lots of other classes okay so this is the interface in the package org open qa selenium and then it has couple of classes like by dot by class by dot by css selector we can use these classes to identify elements on a page we will see more of this in future when we start uh, a bit of selenium and java programming together all right now uh, let us see the web driver interface so i click on the web driver interface here let's see what we have here is yeah so this interface is again derived from another interface so we can have an interface which is from another interface which is search context here and then there are lots of classes which implement it for example android web driver firefox driver chrome driver internet explorer driver we will see some of these classes in the future but the point here is that we have a package org open qa selenium we have an interface called web driver and then we have the classes which are implementing these interfaces we do not have to write any of this code ourselves but we would be using most of it while programming in selenium all right yeah that's all so this brings us to an end of the second tutorial uh, i hope you enjoy this we have yet to learn a uh, lot of important factors of oop concepts uh, which we would see in future videos so bye for now and best of luck with practice